One of the most highly debated things about reptiles is what's the appropriate size of enclosure to keep them in. And something as small as a 20 gallon, not much fits. But today I'm gonna go over the top five reptiles that can live their whole life in a 20 gallon enclosure. My name's Adam, this is Diamond. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. <laughs> Now let's be honest, a 20 gallon enclosure is not very big and most things cannot fit in them. But there are some things that can for their entire life and that's what we're talking about. The optimal size enclosure, not the bare minimum. So no, a bearded dragon cannot live in a 20 gallon enclosure, not even close, uh, maybe when it's a baby, but we're talking about full lifetimes, not something you have to upgrade to later. And keep in mind, I always think bigger is better, but 20 gallons is perfectly fine for Let's just start off. Number five, African fat tail geckos. Now we've done 20 gallon lists before and we've put on leopard geckos and cave geckos. African fat tail geckos are similar in that they're eyelided geckos that are terrestrial. They don't have sticky pads on their feet and their tails can detach. All these animals look very similar. Now, in my opinion, African fat tail geckos are just a little bit more interesting than leopard geckos because especially now with the amount of morphs that are coming out, they just, I don't know, they're a little bit more chill in my opinion. I've never had an African fat tail gecko scream at me, even when it's a baby, where leopard geckos kind of will. Not saying leopard geckos are bad pets, they're actually fantastic, I love them, I have quite a few. I do have uh, a few African fat tail geckos, I got some a couple weeks ago at the Ottawa Pet Expo, so I do have a breeding group, a trio, that I have not paired yet, but the amount of morphs that are coming out are just amazing. Oreos and Amels and Zeros, and there's a whole bunch in Japan that we've never even seen here in North America yet, so I think that they're growing in popularity and they're growing Oh, okay, that's my ear. We've talked about this, no more of that. Come on, be professional. Anyway, there's just so much going on with these guys. Now they're from Africa, of course, from Western Africa, same place you'd find ball pythons actually, kept a little bit more humid than say a leopard gecko, which is why I think in my opinion, they're a little bit better for some people like me who live in more humid environments. They move pretty slow, they eat insects really well. Uh, it's fun to watch them hunt, although they're happy to just eat mealworms out of a bowl. I recommend varying it up, you know, use uh, roaches and a whole bunch of different things. But either way, an insectivorous diet, in my opinion, makes things a little bit easier. It's kind of a one size fits all with diet when it comes to African fat tail geckos and leopard geckos. It's basically the same diet. Anyway, let's move on. Number four, sand boas. So a sand boa is a boa, but they're from Africa. Now, most boas are from the New World. That means the Americas, right? So North America, South America, Central America, where usually you'll find pythons on that side of the world, in the Old World. So sand boas are from like the Middle East, right? Well, Arabians are, but we're talking about Kenyan sand boas, which are from Kenya and surrounding area, which is Africa. Either way, these animals don't lay eggs, just like most boas. These animals will give live birth. And I always say a Kenyan sand boa is kind of like having a box full of dirt because they're going to spend most of their time buried underneath the sand. They'll come out sometimes and to hunt, they'll kind of stick their heads out. They're ambush predators. So imagine like this is like the sand. They're just gonna like stick their head out and like whap, that's how they're gonna eat. That's a very detailed explanation. I'm so good at science. Males just over one foot, females just over two feet. There are outliers, of course, but they're a small animal. These guys are never going to get to ball python size. So to keep them in a 20 gallon enclosure, in my opinion, is perfectly fine. In most cases, a 20 gallon enclosure lengthwise is gonna be longer than the actual snake. And in my opinion, that's really important. Now you could keep them in something bigger if you wanted. And this is one of the animals that you can keep them on sand and no one's gonna have an issue with it because in the wild, that's where you're gonna find them. There's a bunch of different morphs, but even the regular ones, in my opinion, look absolutely fantastic. They're spectacular looking animals. I think that they're popular for a reason, but the reason I don't have them is because I like to walk in my reptile room and see the animals, where with a Kenyan sand boa, most of the time, you're not gonna see them. They're gonna be hidden, most of the time. Number three, white tree frogs, which of course are frogs, which are amphibians, not reptiles. But if you watch the channel, this, this is just what we do. 
we ruin everything with an amphibian. If you don't watch, there's a subscribe, please hit it. That'd be awesome, appreciate you. Anyway, the reason I like them so much is because, well, you can keep one of them in a 20 gallon enclosure, a vertical enclosure, not lengthwise. They are arboreal frogs from Australia. They're called Australian tree frogs or white tree frogs or dumpy tree frogs. Either way, I have five of them. They make crazy noises. The males will croak. <laughs> And of course the females don't. So if you don't want one that makes noise, get a female. Like literally the reason I have them is to listen to them. Well, that's why I got them. And now I have them because they're super fun to watch. Now these frogs are a little bit fatter. Uh, so I've got say red eye tree frogs, which are similar, but the dumpy tree frogs are gonna be fatter. They're gonna be much larger, four-ish inches, three to four and a half inches, somewhere around there. And you can cohab them. So do your research first, don't just go all willy nilly, but having these in a big planted vivarium is what I recommend, that's what I personally do. I'm actually going to upgrade the five that I have into a big 36 by 18 by 36 enclosure. I'm just working on the hardscape, which is for me takes forever. But regardless, if you had one, you could easily put them in a 20 gallon enclosure that is kind of fitted to be uh, arboreal. And you can even actually buy conversion kits. So if you had say on Kijiji or Craigslist, you can make it upright with a conversion kit. So you can keep one. I recommend something bigger and keeping multiple, but if you wanted one, you, you can. And by the way, they eat hilariously. They're just like, they attack insects. Like, I don't know. They're one of my favorite species to keep. I love dumpies. I'll always have them. Number two, gargoyle geckos. I love gargoyle geckos. These are one of the more interesting species from New Caledonia. Well, I think they all are, right? Crested geckos and gargoyle geckos are roughly the same size, similar size. Gargoyle geckos are more apprehensive about dropping their tails. So maybe a little bit better for some people who get nervous about stuff like that. They come in much different pattern and coloration. They do have a lot of morphs and they're gonna be a lot smaller than things like the Lichianus geckos, which personally I love, or Chihua geckos even. So I think most of these animals could probably fit in a 20 gallon forever. Although the lychees, I would say a 40 for sure. But I think that if you wanted a Cresty or a Gargoyle or even a Chihua, most of those could be kept in a 20 gallon forever. I personally, again, like to keep them in something bigger and bioactive and planted, but it's really up to you. Now, gargoyle geckos are awesome because they eat a prepared diet. So Rapashi or Clark's or Pangea or whatever. I personally use Necton. That's what I use now. I prefer it. Just find a flavor that your gecko likes. They're going to eat it. And then with gargoyle geckos, I like to feed mine crickets once a week, or now I'm doing discoid roaches, but there's a link below here if you want to know more about discoid roaches or even mealworms or superworms. But Either way, they're really easy to keep. They're super fun to keep. They don't take up a ton of room. They're gonna be arboreal. They're gonna be nocturnal. They are going to be handleable if you start younger. If you want something that's gonna be more easily handleable, then I would recommend a Cresty, um, but I just think gargoyles are a little bit more interesting, a little bit cooler, and a little bit more expensive, but totally worth it. Number one, hognose snakes. I, You know I love hognose snakes. It was my first snake. We're talking about Westerns or Plains. Either way, these animals come in a bunch of different morphs. I personally love just the way that the normals look. My favorites are the albinos and the condas and albino condas and then albino super condas. That's a whole other video. We should do another video about hognose snakes, shouldn't we? Let me know in the comment section if you wanna hear more about this amazing species. Either way, the males are gonna be like a foot and a half, something like that. Females can get up to three feet, but most of the time they're not even gonna get that big. They come a little chunky, but they're pretty small. And in a 20 gallon long enclosure, you could easily keep one of these, no problem, male or female. Personally, I keep females in something bigger, at least 40 gallons, just because they do move around quite a bit. They're a diurnal species. They do really like even a low wattage UVB. I think that it does help them become a little bit more active. Now these are rear fanged venomous animals. So if they do bite you and you let them chew on you, it, you might get a little reaction, kind of like a bee sting. Most people have no reaction at all, but they don't have a delivery system like say a viper or an alapid where it's a hypodermic needle type thing and they inject the venom into you. Their venom goes through grooves in their teeth and they kind of chew it into you. It's just a really bad delivery system. So nothing much to worry about. Just that they don't constrict their prey like say a milk snake or a corn snake would. These guys are going to bite and just kind of chew the venom in. So a little bit different, a little bit more unique. 
and they don't have the musculature to hold on to as much. So with a corn snake or a ball python, they'll wrap themselves around you. Hogno snakes, you need a little bit more care. They're a little bit derpier. They might fall off of you if you don't really hold on to them properly. There you go. Those are the top five that I think would be best to be kept in a 20 gallon their whole life. Should we do a part three? Because this is actually part two or maybe, no, this is part three. Do you want to see a part four? Let me know in the comments section. As always, a special thanks to the Patreon supporters. You guys got this video early. You guys got to see those geckos and that brand new hogno stick that I just bought early. Discounts on the merch. Get yours. This is a really cool one. Bitey boys for like Halloween. If you order now, it'll come by Halloween. There's a link in the description. Either way, for as little as a dollar a month, you get all that and more. Oh, and also you got the vlog the day that I hung out with Dave Kaufman. That's only on Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month. Because we do videos on Mondays and Thursdays, that means I'll see you in the next one.